Good morning. <laughs> I wasn't sure if there was going to be anybody here at 8 a.m. to hear a 10-minute talk about an outdated piece of technology. <laughs> yeah, yes, yesterday we heard that the brides aren't even calling anymore, right? They're texting us. So, uh, so yeah, we have, to, we have to learn new ways to communicate. But when you get the chance to respond with voicemail, that's what my talk's going to be about today. And uh, being that I, I really like using uh, clips from movies that I think uh, tie in with what I'm talking about, I thought I'd start with a, a favorite clip of mine from the movie Old School. Uh, this is a scene where Will Ferrell is uh, separated from his wife, and he's calling and trying to leave her a voicemail message and not having quite the luck he'd like. Hey, honey, it's me. No uh, listen, just was... Uh, calling to check in. Uh, I, I've been kind of busy lately, a lot of, a lot of paperwork and stuff like that. If you are satisfied, press 1. To re-record, press 2. Hey, Marissa. It's me. Uh, listen, uh, I'm probably going to be in the neighborhood a little bit later. Uh, didn't know if uh, you want to get together for uh, frozen yogurt sometime, or maybe even a whole meal of food, if that'd be agreeable. Stupid. If you are satisfied, press 1. To re-record, press 2. To re-record, press two. Can anybody relate to that? So let's take a look at some common mistakes when it comes to leaving a voicemail message for your business. Uh, number one on the list is calling while distracted. You're in such a hurry to call back that you don't realize that you're driving and the kids are in the back of the car and when you're in the middle of leaving an important part of your message, one of them screams and then you find yourself screaming at them and you realize you just did that on a recording. So got to make sure that you're not going to be distracted in the middle of that phone call. My favorite uh, is the second one and that's the voicemail message that ramble, rambles incoherently. Uh, anybody have a friend who calls and leaves you that message that goes three minutes? Yeah, I've got one of those, yeah. And after about 30 seconds, you start realizing that it's not going to go anywhere and and you're probably just going to wind up deleting the message and not listening to the whole thing. And so we have to be careful that we don't wind up rambling incoherently and going on and on and on without having a point, just like I'm doing right now. Okay, so then the next common mistake that I have seen is giving your sales pitch. You're leaving a voicemail message, and so you're taking this opportunity to give them every reason in the world why they want to hire your services and use your services, and that's what a sales consultation's for. That's what a sales meeting is for. If you're calling to leave them a voicemail message, your purpose is to create enough interest for them to want to call you back, right? So they can talk with you and maybe schedule an appointment because your closing ratio is going to go up dramatically when you actually get the chance to meet with them. So if you're spending time leaving a sales pitch about why you think they should hire your services, you're actually wasting your time and probably theirs, and they're probably not going to listen to the whole message. Another common mistake is uh, focusing on your wants. Uh, I really want to set an appointment with you, and I've got this time available, so if you would like to schedule an appointment to meet with me, I would love to schedule this appointment. And it's all about what I want instead of what the customer needs and what they're looking for. We have to remember that we work in the service industry, and we have to take our focus off of what we want and what we need and put the focus on what their wants and needs are and find the way to service them best. So uh, we want to avoid coming across sounding like this is all about what we want to happen. We want to focus on what their desires and goals are. And and then uh, this one's one of my personal favorites, uh, leaving out contact info. Yeah, this, was a, this one actually happened to me um, years ago. I had a bride who called me, and she said, Hi, my name's Christy, and I heard about your services, and I can't wait to talk to you about my wedding, so give me a call, okay? She didn't leave a phone number. It's kind of hard to call her back. About three minutes later, I got another voicemail from Christy, and I was elated. I'm like, oh, thank God she called back. Hi, this is Christy. I just realized that I called you, and I forgot to leave you my number. It's just that I'm getting married, and I heard about your services, and I really want to talk to you. So give me a call, okay? She did it twice, twice in a row. And at that point in time, I didn't have the technology available to most of us these days to be able to look at the number and call her back. My voicemail didn't offer that option, so I had no way to respond to her. And uh, sometimes we get a little caught up in what we're saying, and maybe we forget to leave the contact info. Uh, we want to make sure that we leave a way for them to be able to reach us and contact us. And as we heard yesterday, that might even mean giving them your cell phone number and inviting them to text if that's what they prefer to do. So uh, let's look at uh, one more. Sounding dispassionate and insincere. Uh, thank you for calling. I want to thank you for your time. I'm really interested in working with you on your wedding. If, if you could give me a call, I'd be really, really happy to make this an amazing day for you. And so if you could just call me back, I know that we can make your wedding really, really fun. 
Are you going to call that person back? I don't think so. Okay, so we got to make sure we, we don't come off sounding dispassionate and insincere. So let's take a look at some common solutions. Uh, some, sim some simple solutions are, starting with the first one, call when you're ready. Call when you're ready. If you're in the car, if you are in the middle of, of a task that you were working on and you're not in the right mind frame, make sure you're ready and focused to leave the kind of message that's going to get results. And if that means making them wait two minutes to respond so that you're ready and you're in a place that's quiet and you're in a place where you can be focused, take the time to do what you need to do to leave them a message that's going to be focused and coherent and they're going to be able to hear what you're saying without any distractions in the background. So call when you're ready. Next, keep it short. Keep it short. Here's a question. Can you tweet your voicemail message? Try writing it out. I found that tweet is a fantastic way to condense down what you want to say. Go on Twitter and write out what you'd like to say in your voicemail message. And if it shows you that you've got it in 140 characters or less, you're going to have a nice, concise message. And that's going to make what you do much more effective. If you can't keep it under 140 characters, try keeping it under 30 seconds. You don't want it to be one of those messages that goes on so long that they just lose interest. So keep it short. Keep it succinct. Next, make it unique. Make it unique. Say something in what you're saying that makes you stand apart from every other professional in your category. Say something about who you are and what you bring to the table that's not a sales pitch, but something that just plants a seed in their mind that you offer something unique, and that will plant a seed in their mind saying, I've not heard this particular statement. I want to talk to this person, and it's going to create more desire for them to want to call you back and talk to you. Here's another uh, simple solution. Offer a reward. Offer a reward. If you call me back and schedule an appointment, I will da, 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 da. What's your reward? What can you offer that bride and groom to entice them to want to meet with you? What kind of freebie? What kind of bonus item? What kind of uh, upgrade? Whatever, whatever fits for you and what fits in your toy box, so to speak. Uh, in my line of work, being able to give them fun ideas is helpful. And there's a little book that uh, I managed to get published a few years ago called The Best Wedding Reception Ever. So I know some DJs who would say, if you take the time to meet with me, we'll give you a copy of this book that's got a bunch of great ideas. Maybe you put together a list of things that they need to be aware of when selecting your category. And you're going to give that to them at no obligation whether they hire you or not, but it's going to help them make the best choice possible. Whatever that item is, let them know that you've got something for them. You've got something you'd like to give them because it's not going to be a waste of their time to meet with you, whether they hire you or not, because they're going to get something they can actually use as they're making their final decision. And then repeat your number. <laughs> Say it at least twice. And if you need to put in a website, if it's hard to spell, make sure you spell it. Make sure you speak very clearly and enunciate while you're spelling out the website or an email address. Whatever the contact info is that you're trying to leave, make sure that it comes through very clear. There's nothing worse than getting a voicemail from somebody and they get a little mushy mouth when they're leaving their number. What was the number? I, I lost that last digit. What was it? Now they're going to be you know, guessing for 10 tries until they finally get your number correct. So uh, say, say the number twice. Repeat it at least twice. And then finally, remember to smile. Remember to smile. Now, this one can be a challenge because you may be having a bit of a tough day. And maybe they called and their message was, how much? And that's their starting point. And so you're already feeling like you're starting off at a good spot, at a, at a spot that's not as strong as you'd like it to be. And uh, even when we're not in the right frame of mood, as Nat King Cole said, Smile. Though your heart is aching Smile even though it's breaking When people are on the phone, unless you're on FaceTime with them, there's only one thing they can see through that phone line, and that's your smile. They can see that smile. They can feel that smile. Uh, my, uh, my girlfriend Audrey told me that when she was first learning sales, they told her to put a mirror next to her telephone and she would look in the mirror while she was leaving people messages to remind herself that she better have a big smile on her face. Because if people see that smile, they're going to be thrilled to see that, and they're going to hear it, and they're going to feel it. So putting these all together, how about a short voicemail message? 
Hi, this is Peter Mary with Mary Weddings. Thank you so much for taking the time to call me. I would love to schedule an appointment with you at a time that's convenient. I am one of only 24 people in the entire world who's earned the title of Wedding Entertainment Director, and I'd love to talk to you about what that means for the success of your celebration. If you take the time to meet with me, I'll also give you a free copy of a fantastic book called The Best Wedding Reception Ever as my gift for taking the time to actually consider my services. My my phone number is 800-994-5338. That's 800-994-5338. Look forward to talking to you soon. Goodbye.